So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand, and I welcome you to this series called RBI 24/7. So as most of you would be knowing that in this series we discuss a set of five questions which can be of use to you if you are preparing for competitive exams. So in this in this session we are going to do the same, and we are going to discuss some questions based on the topic of disinvestment. Right. So I hope you are ready for this session. And before moving to question number one. I would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel. So, if this is the first video of our channel that you are watching, then do not forget to hit the subscribe button, and you can also press this bell icon which is flashing on the screen. It can help you to get notified whenever a new video comes up. After that, you can also join our Telegram group, on which you can post all your doubts and queries, and we'll try to resolve them as soon as possible. Right? So, are you ready for question number one? Here is question number one, which says. Which of the following is not a type of disinvestment? So five options given to you. You have to select the ones which are not a type of disinvestment, right? So simple enough. Moving ahead to the solution, and the correct option for this question is option B. Option B means two, three, and four. So two, three, and four. These three options not a part of disinvestment. First is a part of disinvestment, and fifth, complete privatization is a type of disinvestment. Right now, let us learn about them. That what is their meaning? Okay, here you can see the three types of disinvestments. First of all, the minority disinvestment. So, minority disinvestment means that when see first of all, what is the meaning of disinvestment? I hope most of us are aware of it. Disinvestment means when government sells some part of its own enterprise to the private sector, right? So basically, government is leaving control and giving it to the private sector. So there can be many reasons behind it, but uh, when we are talking about minority disinvestment, it means that government of India at the end retains a majority stake. That means it is disinvesting a minority part. And keeping the majority of the stake with itself, giving some smaller share to the private sector, right? So, see, government is retaining majority stake, typically more than fifty-one percent in the company, and ensures management control. Why is government keeping the majority stake with itself so that it can control the enterprise? Because if it has the majority stake, the majority of the voting power is within the hands of government, right? So this is minority disinvestment, guys. Do not confuse it. Minority is getting disinvest disinvested. That means government is having a majority stake. And the opposite happens in case of majority disinvestment. Here, major share of a PSU is getting disinvested, and government of India is retaining a minority stake. So here, the control, most of the control, most of the voting power is also uh, basically most of the voting power is also getting transferred to the private sector, right? So majority disinvestment. At the end of it, government retains a minority stake in the company, sells off a majority stake, and it is also called strategic disinvestment, right? Moving ahead to the next type, which is called complete privatization. So simple enough. In in this, hundred percent shares of a PSU are transferred to the private sector, right? So hundred percent control is passed on to the buyer, and government of India completely disinvests from that PSU. So I hope now you understand this. Moving ahead to the next question for today. So this is the second question, and it says. There is a principle which guides strategic investment by government of India, and you have to tell out of these five options which one is the statement which tells you about that principle correctly, right? So we just learned about strategic disinvestment. So majority disinvestment is known as strategic disinvestment. You have to select the correct option, which is the principle behind it, and the correct option for this question is option D. option d means government should discontinue in sectors where competitive market markets have come of age this is the correct principle now what is the meaning of it 
so guys i just told you that majority disinvestment is strategic disinvestment right so government is retaining a minority stake and giving the maximum power in the hands of private players so why is it doing so the reason behind it is that the this principle which is underlying strategic disinvestment it says that that if there is a particular sector in which there is no need for the government to play a majority role or a dominant role or there are many firms providing goods and services in that particular field uh, from that field government can pull its hands back so that the burden of government is reduced and private players can ensure a better price discovery of that particular good or service in that field right so i hope now you understand the meaning so government should discontinue or government should reduce themselves in sectors where competitive markets or where there are so many players that they can ensure a competitive market a free market or a market uh, where fair competition can work if there is such a field where fair competition can be held by private players then there is no need for government to uh, to level the field or to ensure that nothing is going wrong right so just as uh, we recently heard that government that central bank uh, mentioned that uh, this, the nbfcs or the private players which are bigger in size more than 50000 crore they should be turned into banks so or uh, the banking sector should be open for the private players big business conglomerates so basically they are trying to open up the banking sector which in india was once dominated by public sector bank by government banks because people used to have trust on them right so they are trying to uh, they are trying to pass this power in the hands of private players so when government came up with atmanirbhar package in may then also they talked about many disinvestment uh, disinvestment proposals and they said that in many fields uh, not more than four government entities will be working in many sectors right so if you remember uh, in the pre lpg era there were many sectors which were reserved for the uh, uh, for the public sector right so on, there only government could trade or government could provide goods and services but slowly uh, and gradually this trend started changing and private players started entering right so as private players develop they 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 flourish in a sector there is no need for government to hold the power there this is the principle moving ahead here you can see some more information about this principle undertakes this investment to reduce the fiscal burden on exchequer so that the fiscal burden on government is reduced raise money for meeting specific needs so obviously if government is transferring some shares to the private sector then it is raising money out of it and to bridge the revenue shortfall from other regular sources so this is also a major reason when whenever government needs money it tries to sell some of its assets strategic disinvestment is the transfer of ownership and control of a public sector entity to some other entity right so divest this investment commission defines strategic sale as substantial sale of government i think we have discussed this uh, this is just to read you can read it on your own right strategic disinvestment in india guided by this basic economic principle that government should not be in business to engage itself in manufacturing of goods and services where competitive markets have come of age and there is economic potential of such entities to be better discovered see because if private players enter then they might bring new technology with them they might bring new innovation with them which is which is seldom found in the public sector that is why improving the efficiency a uh, better price discovery so uh, in delhi also uh, when uh, electricity provision was in the hands of government then uh, then there were um, there were many leakages in supply there was many short there were there used to be shortfalls in supply but after some private players took over the response the results have been much better or because of increased efficiency right due to various factors like infusion of capital technology upgradation and efficient management practices moving ahead 
So this is your third question for today, which says which of the following is not an objective of disinvestment? Very simple question. Um, since we have discussed a lot about disinvestment, moving ahead to the solution. And the correct option for this question is option B. Option B means to reduce competition for domestic firms. So this is not an objective because what disinvestment does is to put power in the hands of private players. That is why it increases competition. And many a times it invites or attracts foreign entities into a particular sector that is why it results in increasing competition rather than reducing competition <coughs> right so i think simple enough okay here you can see opening up markets for private firm eventually leads to better capital markets but supporting liquidity measures by aiding consumption and demand as the need arises. See, government gets money and then they can spend that money uh, in the economy and they can try to boost consumption and revive economy. Just as in current times, government needs to uh, boost demand and for that they need to spend money and that they can raise through disinvesting. Right? So, rest are the objectives of disinvestment. You can see here. To make public sector un uh, undertaking efficient i just told you with an example fund developmental programs obviously reduce the burden on government because the management gets transferred to the private sector that is why the burden on government is reduced to attract foreign investment right okay raising money for fulfilling the goals of governments and development in the country, channelizing resources to more productive avenues. See, if government is not able to manage an enterprise properly and the quality and of efficiency is not good, then it is better to try transfer it to the private players. Right? So, reduces capital expenditure by reducing burden of government on existing non-performing assets or loss-making firms. Right? So, improves the ROI of underperforming firms and reducing the financial burden on government, right? Okay, here is your fourth question for today. And this question says, what does it refer to? Two statements given to you and they tell you about something. They tell you about an organization. You have to tell which one is correct. Moving ahead to the solution. And the correct option for this question is option E. Option E means Deepam. The full form of it is Department of Investment and Public Asset Management, in short known as Deepam. Right? So this is an authority which is concerned with managing disinvestment of PSUs in India. Right? So nodal agency to advise union government in the matters regarding financial restructuring of PSUs. So, they have to manage public assets, the assets which belong to the public at large, they have to manage it. So, when, so whenever a financial restructuring is needed in any of such entities, Deepam comes into action. Has the job to bring operational efficiencies in central PSEs through strategic investment. So, those PSEs, those public sector undertakings, where uh, potential can be generated or which can be turned into profit making uh, to generate strategic investment for them is the job of this organization. And <coughs> disinvesting loss making PSUs uh, is also one job, right? So, here you can see some mandates of Deepam. I hope this is readable. Yes. Okay. So, matters relating to management of cent. So, guys, I don't think there is not, um, much here to discuss. We'll just go through the points quickly. Matters relating to management of central government investment, including disinvestment. I just told you the uh, disinvestment of CPSEs, that is central public sector undertakings. Matters relating to sale of 
सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इक्विटी व्हाट शुड बी दी मोड दैट वेदर इट शुड बी डन थ्रू एन आईपीओ जस्ट एज एल आई सीज आईपीओ इज कमिंग और एफ और देर शुड बी एन ऑफर फॉर सेल सो वट शुड बी दी मोड ऑफ डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीजन ऑन रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव मिनिस्ट्रीज नीति आयोग फॉर डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट राइट सो Uh, what to do with the recommendations that other authorities other regulators make matters related to independent external monitors for disinvestment and public asset management so who is going to monitor the process of disinvestment decision in matters relating to cpsus for purposes government in equity like capital restructuring so whenever as i as i just told you whenever financial restructuring is needed in such asset that what should be the amount of dividend paid uh, should uh, should the cpsc come up with some bonus shares or there should be disinvestment or whatever the related issues are with the financial management of cpss advising the government how to attract investment and after that uti along with subjects relating to specified undertaking of the unit trust of india right so these are some mandates of epom moving ahead to the last question for today here is the fifth question for today and this question asks you to correct select the correct statement regarding psus in india so three statements given to you you have to select the correct ones moving ahead to the op correct option and the correct option for this question is option c that means only two is correct rest of them are not correct and why they are not correct see in india psu is a state owned enterprise which owns minority of the shares so this should have been majority because government or the state they own majority of the shares 51% or more so this is one error here so and so second statement is correct which says psus are the wealth of a nation and the third statement it says these ownership of these enterprises is arranged the ownership of these enterprises is arranged in order to put to ensure so there's a there's a correction here in the statement there there has been some typing mistake okay guys so this is array so the okay the statement is the ownership of these enterprises psus is arranged in order put to ensure that this wealth rests in the hands of major players of the economy so this is not right because see if bsus are wealth of the nation they should they should rest within the hands of public rather than some major private players right so the the final statement would be the ownership of these enterprises is arranged in order to ensure that this wealth rests in the hands of made uh, it rests in the hands of public of the country right so this should have been the correct statement uh, okay that is why only two is correct moving ahead here you can see the definition of psus comprises of public services enterprises and provide services that benefit the entire society so the rationale behind establishing psus is to put power into hands of government so that they can ensure social welfare because if you are going to give everything to the private sector or if you are going to allow them to do whatever they want they might end up uh, they might end up ignoring the social welfare at large in order to make money because profit making is the sole objective in the private sector right although now these things are changing with the emergence of corporate governance but still public sector needs to be there to ensure the welfare of the downtrodden section of the society and obviously the availability of capital goods industries and basic industries so many industries where the investment is so large that only government can make it or uh, many or private players would not be able to enter it and if any private player has that amount of money that is going to lead to monopoly because not many can enter the field because of huge amount that is required to enter the particular sector right so to ensure the availability of uh, capital good industries and those industries where huge amounts of money is required right 
so not a part of public sector termed as private sector here some objectives of psus are given to you create an industrial base generate a better quality of employment so we can see that how uh, students are so crazy about getting a government job because they think the perks are very good so that is why generate quality employment develop basic infrastructure in the country provide resources to the government obviously many of the profit making psus they they are like uh, cash cows for the government so that they can uh, they can, they they provide money to the government as they are the major shareholders promote exports and reduce imports because they promote domestic manufacturing so promote exports reduce inequalities or like regional disparities because government can think that okay if there is some remote uh, village in jharkhand we have to go there and establish industry an industry which will provide employment and lead to development of that particular area which private players might not think so to accelerate economic growth and to ensure that there are lesser and lesser inequalities so to uh, to cover up the disparities psus are important so guys these were the five questions for today i hope you learned something new from this video and if you did then do not forget to hit the like button because i'll be back in next session with some new information till then you take care of your health keep your studies going on and thank you for being here